Hi, what we're going to do is some data analysis with the value count function. This operates a little bit similar to group by, but there are also advantages of using this function. So we're going to explore this pandas function and answer some questions. We are using a employee churn data set for our analysis. And here are the questions we're going to answer is the percentage of employees in each department, create a simple chart, salaries, what is the top segment of employee by salary in department, what department has the most churn, and can you group employees into three groups based on monthly hours. So all of this can be done with the values count function. So let's get started. So we've already imported pandas and saved it as PD, that's our variable. And then we use the PD variable to call the read CSV function and pass in our data file location. Mine is in my working directory, so I don't have to write out the location. Then now that we have saved that CSV under the variable DF for data frame, we have access to the head function, which gives us the first five rows. And we have satisfaction, last evaluation, number of projects, monthly hours, total time in the company, work accidents, quit the company, which is our churn column, promotions, our departments and salaries, and then our management column. So I'm going to create a few more cells just by pressing the plus button. And then now that we have our data frame variable, we can always isolate a column we're interested in by using bracket notations and the parentheses. And I'm going to call the salary column. So by doing that, I've isolated the salary column. And now we're going to use the value counts function. So that's value underscore counts. And what is that going to do? That's going to count these labels in salary here. So you can see here is the low and medium and high distribution of salaries. So most of our employees are in this distribution. Now, we can always see what this function requires by pressing shift tab. And you can see there are some different parameters we can use. For example, normalizing and ascending. So I'm going to click that off. So we can see that the vast majority of our salaries are in the low category. But if you wanted to get a percentage, we would use normalize equals true and rerun that. Now you can see that it's 48% of our employees are in the low and then another 42% are in the median. So that's already answered one of our questions. We can easily change this column to, we can write departments. and press shift enter. And now we can see the breakdown of departments. And we still have that normalize. If we didn't want to have that normalize, we would just get rid of that. And it's already in descending order. And if we wanted to get a quick visualization as in a plot, we would type in dot plot at the end and from that, we can see this visualization. Obviously, that's not what we want. So in order to change that plot, we can press kind parentheses and we can pass it a bar. So now you have the bar. You can even do a horizontal bar by doing bar H. And this is where you can see that we may want to flip this by using that ascending argument in value counts. Ascending equals, and let's just take a look. What is, you can see by, by default is set to false. 
So if we change this to true, let's see what happens. Now you can see that that is flipped and you have a quick visualization. So we've already answered two of our questions. The next thing you want to do is see what is the intersection between employee by salary and department. We know we already have department isolated. And if we want to use more than one value, we pass it a list and a list is always encapsulated by brackets. So now I would just pass and if you see a little space here, it's because the department has a space after it for some reason. And then if I wanted to pass salary here and then use value counts, we also can see the department. So we can see sales has the most of our employees. And then the majority of those are in the low range. And then if we come down here, we can see there's a high salary amount in sales, but it's only 269 people. So that's a good way to see the highest segment of employees, which is this 2,099, which are in the low salary range and in sales. Then you may want to know what departments have the most churn. So we can replace this value with our value for the company, which is not churn, which is quit the company. So I'm just copying and pasting that, encapsulating in parentheses, value count. And as you see, one is where we are in terms of who quit the company. So we would only be looking at the ones. So we can see again, sales has the most churn. Now, if we only wanted to evaluate sales, we could easily isolate our column by creating a, a condition to say, okay, uh, for departments equals, and then we say sales. This is what we call a, a mask. So you can see it says true, true and false for everything that sales. But if I only want to bring in that data frame, I would encapsulate that condition into brackets. And if I run this, now we can see we are only bringing in sales. So you could call this data frame sales by passing in this variable, then using sales and looking at the value counts of those who quit the company. And we would pass value counts. And now we can see the number who have quit the company. It may be good to see this in a percentage. So we can see 75% remain. So if we are looking at a percentage like this, sometimes it is better to visualize that. And then we can always do a plot. And then of course we don't want a line. So maybe we pass it a pie chart. So then you can see the pie chart there. The last thing we were tasked with doing is creating a grouping of hours. And the great thing about the values count function, if we want to isolate the hours work, let's go back up and get that column heading, monthly hours. And we can see that this column is not a label like department and sales, but actually a continuous number. But we can utilize the value counts with bins to create a 
three groupings. If I run this as is, you can see that it's not very telling. Of course, we could just look at the top five by using the head function. And then this is very difficult to understand because what it's saying is 153 people are at 156 hours, but that's not so helpful. It would be better to group this continuous number in bins. We can pass the bins parameter and specify the number of bins. And now you can see that from this number to this number, we have 5,683. And from here, which looks about, it, the bins are broken up into around 70 hours you can see the breakdown there also. And you can definitely change the number of bins to five if you would like, or even 10. This is a great way to structure your data. And of course you could plot that as a bar so you could see the breakdowns of the bins. This is just a quick and easy way to evaluate your data using value counts and is a valuable data analysis tool that you can add to your arsenal. Thank you.